Jake Podcast, jakepodcast.com, dot com. What's going on, bro? What's up? That was an interesting pre-show shenanigans we had. That was actually really funny, though. It, it, it was. The only bad part, and, and you mentioned it like, oh, well, why aren't you recording this? But they were sitting over there, and we wouldn't have heard anything they were saying, which would have driven anyone who was listening, which I've heard already from people when somebody was off mic or you know couldn't be heard or the volume yeah. was weird. But, dude, that was good, weird conversation. Like, that could have... Dude, we did. We talked about the most bizarre things in life. It was very disturbing, a bit. It was, <laughs> but but you know what? And we can we can kind of cliff note it and and do whatever. I had a couple guys, and this is a great part of telling stories, right? You actually don't need the individuals to be here because <laughs> we got all the information we needed out of them. Um, the a couple guys, you know, oh, we're going out tonight, and they were one of them was asking to sit in on the podcast. Well, of course, because I'm not. 100% an adult. I didn't go get the extra cords for the two auxiliary mics. When we ordered them in, we thought they came with them, but they didn't. So we've just been running off too. I just can't believe you said you're going to send me to do it. <laughs> I was, well, dude, if you were sitting here chilling all day, like every day other in life where I don't utilize the fact where you've, you've said, I'll go get it or I'll go do this. You've offered to do a million things, which I had nothing for you to do. The one day where I had something for you to do, I went, Oh, because I did when I got here, I was like, ah, balls. You know, I know Ben said he wanted to come in and and uh, do whatever. So worst case scenario, we do the share mic, right? Sharing yeah. is caring, right? But he doesn't like to share. He really doesn't like to share. He was not happy about the sharing process. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was pretty funny. But I tell these I tell these guys, right? They're like, well, yeah, we're going to go out and do this and that. And I was like, cool. Take him, you know, take an Uber. Be safe. I'm baffled, which. Everyone knows about Uber. You know about Uber. I know about Uber. Oh, yeah. Uber's the way to go. Why would you, on the off chance, like imagine you're 21, right? Yeah. Think two years in the future or whatever. I already right? do my two years yeah. now, so. <laughs> so, if you, so if you think two years in the future and, hey, we're going to go to the bar and, girl, let's turn it up and whatever it is you're going to do, right? I don't know whatever your term will be in two years in the future, <laughs> right? But, uh. If you, if you say, hey, let's go do whatever, and you guys know you're going to drink, and you've already known that when you drink, you get a little bit silly and whatever, and even if it's only 10 miles, maybe you're going 10, 15 miles away, why take your vehicle there, even on the off chance that maybe one of y'all is going to get too intoxicated, that number one, you're going to have to leave your vehicle there being responsible, like, I'm not driving, don't worry, I'll give you a ride home, so one of your friends gives you a ride home, any number of, of scenarios or you're dumb enough to go, I got this. Well, <laughs> I'm not that buzzed, right? But the law doesn't care. Be one smidgen over, it's going to cost you like a minimum of $10,000 to get out of your, you know, hiring attorney, your fees, your first drunk driving, all that stuff, right? So it's never, never worth it. Um, I know that's kind of hard because right now you're invincible. You, we, we'll go out and do whatever, and I'm sure you've driven intoxicated, which we all have, right? You got to love being 19, man. <laughs> oh, dude. I don't, I've driven, I've driven down the road where, the white line and the yellow line. And it was funny because where we're at right here, obviously we both know the area we're in, the subdivision just north of here, like maybe like a quarter of a mile on yeah. the left, right by the other little elementary school. Yeah. I guess I was playing like elementary school <laughs> tag because I live by field, field elementary, and that's Erickson, I believe. That is. That Erickson. is Erickson. So Erickson to field. And one street before field is my neighborhood, and I was pulling out of the, the one right one street south of Erickson. So in hindsight, not that big of a risk, right? Who am I going to encounter? But I was wasted. Like I was wasted, got into a fight, uh, semi broke up with my girlfriend, whatever, and then drank heavily and was like, screw you guys. I've had enough. I'm taking my ball and going home. I pull out and I had a hot rod truck at the time, right? So I'm vroom, vroom, and I pull out and I went, oh, the minute I got onto Haggerty, both of those, like the 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 yellow and the and the white. white line, crossed, and made an X. And I went, oh no, like double vision, like oh my I'm so. God. And then my brain started working overtime as as it would in my like 19, 20 year old like you know world. And I went, well, if that one and that one, and it's making so I kept it in a perfect X, which in my mind led me to believe that I'd be going straight. Right, because the two lines, as I'm looking at them at a distance, should normally go this way, but they were crossing. So I did, and I kind of freaked me out, and I went, you know, way slow, because I just way slow, 
maybe just a little bit under the speed limit just to make sure like I need to hurry up and get that one quarter of a mile turn right and get into my neighborhood because holy crap I can't believe I'm driving at this moment and it's usually like hot over there there's a cop literally like right there at that one restaurant is right there yeah but remember Erickson I'm on this side of Erickson so it's yeah but they're watching like hawks oh yeah no they're (laughs) they're ridiculous so so with so with that I did I mean look I've done it everyone's done it right but I I now with the invention of Uber and all this stuff I and look I was I kind of get where they're coming from you're used to taking your vehicle to the bar yeah if something happens you do whatever I didn't really understand Uber not as misinformed and uh, you know informed as they are about Uber <laughs> but enough to the point that I would I would still drive to the bar and go, ah, if I don't get too drunk, I'll drive home, right? I kind of know where my drunk level is and what legally intoxicated. And there's mathematics on how many beers did you drink or how many drinks did you have, have a couple glasses of water and give like an hour between this and this and sober up and you should drive. Even if you're a little bit buzzed, you're under the legal limit, right? So you won't catch a DUI or whatever. But I would drive to the bar and then if I did get banged up, then I would call an Uber, right? which then you don't think about it because you're intoxicated. You get a ride home. Cool. You get home, you wake up in the morning, and you go, oh, balls, I got to go to work. Walk outside, and your car's not there. And you go, oh, I got to call an Uber to drive me back to my car, get my car, and then go to work, right? So you're just adding on this. If you would have just spent the extra $8 to Uber to the bar, drink like a banshee, because now you've got no (laughs) – it doesn't matter. I've got a, I've got a ride. I've got some random person's gonna come pick me up and take me home, right? A much better person than me, and then drive home. And then you wake up in the morning. Your car is there. Everything is safe. You didn't leave it in a weird parking lot. You're hungover. You feel like crap. That's right. Now you're driving and go. Please don't tell me I get pulled over this morning and still get a DUI because I don't feel like I should be driving, which is always tricky. Like on some of those nights where you had to get up and go to work the next day and be like, oh. Dude, I wonder if I got pulled over. Like, that would be like, come on, dude. I went and slept like six hours. I shouldn't still be drunk. Maybe I shouldn't have drank as much as I did. But, dude, it's the next day. Like, give me a break. Yeah. Dude, it makes me nervous sometimes when I drive in the morning after drinking. Like, Ori. Oh, no, that's a good thing. I live across the street, so I can just walk over here, get my CVD. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Feel your, better. <laughs> get your head right, and then you're good to go. But what were what were their, their first initial reactions to Uber? Um, Basically, how girl how the Uber drivers like girls that are 14 to 19. Well, no, 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 no. <laughs> Don't say well, – you gotta be you got to be careful. To reiterate it 100%. They said – Sex trafficking, you know, sex trafficking is crazy. And I goes, you think Uber drivers are just like, like, oh, there's a good one. Like, just pull over here, lock the doors, throw her in the trunk. And I go, you know, maybe you should wait until you've heard some stir- stories about that before you, like, that's one of your concerns. And, you know, like, that somebody's going to, like, steal a chick. And I was like, but what about you? Well, I don't know. I just don't. Well, do you know who's coming to pick you up? And I was like, you really haven't used the app, right? Like, it shows all their information, their the, picture, their age, their car. They, like, give everything out. So it's like, they're not just hiring crazy people. They actually Yeah, no, they do people. criminal background checks. Um, criminal background checks, which isn't a guarantee because you could be crazy and you were just holding off your crazy until, you know, ah, today was the day and now you're going to go crazy, which could be <laughs> bad for you. But it could also go bad in a million other ways. We live in a crazy world. But then they were like, well, it's not that. So I could see, like, us, we're men, we could do it. But women, I could see why they wouldn't want to. And I went, well, why? So they should just risk a DUI because they don't want to take an Uber? Well, sex trafficking. And I'm like, God, you sound like my mom, right? Like, <laughs> like girls are being kidnapped <laughs> off the street. I was like, dude, you know, I'd be willing to say that, you know, if you looked around in the, you know, in the three cities around us, like, how many people have been just, like, kidnapped with a burlap sap? You know, like just somebody came with a, with a, you know, like when you play the one legged race at like yeah. family reunions or they like whatever those things you did at, at school or whatever. God, what were those things called? Remember when you, uh, where you would get the ribbons and what a field day? Do you yeah. remember like field days at school where you'd have yeah. to like three legged race and do all that? But somebody just comes with a brown burlap sap and, oh, and just steals you. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Like, I'm not going to say it doesn't happen anywhere, but it's can. It, like, it does not happen. I and walk not, the streets at night. It's not going to happen. Yeah, and not from, and not from a company that screens their people that that is their way of life, 
and well, what if you're drunk and does somebody put a tag and whatever? I go on the app. It shows you're being picked up by a white, you know, Chevy Lumina, you know, and the dude's name is so and so, and it's got a picture of him. You know what I mean? You've got every you can do the check. Well, what if you're wasted and you don't do the check? And I was like, well, maybe Darwinism, and you don't deserve to be on this planet. Maybe somebody should kidnap you and do whatever, <laughs> right? Like, how much did you drink that you can't like rationalize? Like this is the car that's picking me up X, <laughs> Y, and Z, right? Which sometimes you know people do. And then their second one was, well, what if the person takes the the lady home and drops her off? And now he knows she's there and he just turns off like I'm not working anymore and then breaks in and, you know, steals her, or rapes her, or does something. And I'm like, wow, like this is like some like that's so that's some FBI stuff. That right is some. There. Yeah, that's some, that's some CSI. <laughs> yeah, like that's some real like y'all have thought about this. Like, like for real? does this shit happen in your world? Like you only live like six miles that way. Is it rough over there? <laughs> Like, dude, I watch the news every day. I don't see that shit happening in Detroit on a regular basis, you know? It really doesn't. I'm like, come on. So, but at the end of the day, people have a hard time, and it's a it's a big risk for a hard time getting used to new technology. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah, that's kooky. I don't understand, like, to spend $16 when you're going out anyways – to ensure that you're getting home, you can pretty much check getting a DUI off your, you know, off your thing. Exactly. Accidentally, you know, oh my God, I dozed off and running into a tree and harming yourself or harming somebody else, right? Not even a DUI, but getting in a crash or doing whatever. In this day and age, it should not even be a thought. Like it should just right out of your mind. I yes. wait, I wait at my house. I do the Uber and I'm like, cool. They tell you be there in 12 minutes. Cool. Let me brush my teeth, put on, some, put on some smell good. You know, blah, blah, blah. Should I wear this shirt? Should I not wear this shirt? Fuck, and I'm not going to wear this shirt. Let me go get another shirt. Cool, he's still going to be here in four minutes, right? I can go through like three wardrobe changes, brush my teeth, clip my fingernails. I don't know. And then Take dudes. The crap. No, sometimes, man, you never know. I'm a long poop. I make the, the long time. But you poop faster than you pee. It just seems that way. <laughs> it's mathematically impossible. There's a lot more production to go into it, whatever. Because <laughs> when you poo, you generally tinkle a little bit anyway, so. Oh, my God. So you just pee and poo at the same time? Well, yeah. Sometimes, or you poo, or you pee first, and then you poo, or you poo, and then you pee. Sometimes it happens, like, you know, Simico. It's just kind of at the same time. I don't know. But when that happens to you, do you, like, because of your dick, do you pee on the floor? No. You make sure the thing is in there <laughs> pointing through the, you well, know, you got to. crap gets on it. <laughs> It's not. It's good. Well, that's a distance between the two. It's not like hanging. But well, like if a, you have an explosion, it's like. Okay, then yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> oh my God! Do you want to hear something creepy? All right. This is what this is what happened last night. I hate you. I think you've got my house bugged, or you've got like a camera in there. So last <laughs> so last night I was tired, and I haven't like I'm not a hundred percent. My sinuses have been uh, has been acting up, and I'm, you hear me cough a little bit and whatever, which yeah, is abnormal. Yeah, for the past few days. Yeah, it's taken a while. My allergies, my sinuses are running. So, and it gets in my lungs and cough it up and whatever. So when I left out of here, I was tired. Part of me, I was grumpy and whatever and, you know, needed the Snickers and whatever. So I was grumpy and not 100%, uh, you know, me. So by the time I got home, I was like, cool, dogs, and like get everybody outside. Um, I hurried up and I made myself something to eat and did whatever, start, you know, finished whatever uploading I was doing. And cool, ah, go in. And just when I'm getting in my room, I was like, oh, I got I to gotta hit the restroom. So I walk in there. Now, I'm normally, like, super observant. Like, I will open the lid and look, you know, just to make sure there's not, like, a rattlesnake in there or something. I, dude. More like paranoid. Um, have you not seen, like, dude, number one, I don't like snakes. Number <laughs> two, I've seen weird stuff on the internet where snakes or, like, some kind of <laughs> reptile is in, the, is in the crapper. So I, um, I didn't, I just, I guess I walked in like, man, I just really want to go to bed. I can't believe my stomach is like, I got to drop a deuce and whatever. So I flipped the lid, turn around, sit down. I have an explosion, right? <laughs> like it was weird, like a <laughs> volcano, right? So, so as Did I do, no. So as I do, I feel like a little, like a little splashback. And then there was this weird, like good clean smell. And I went what did I eat like deodorant or something today? Like, you know, did I eat a bar of soap? Like how did my poo and like the little air, like it was an explosion enough to move the air, like in between the seat and whatever. <laughs> and I smell and I went, I was like, what? I was like, what in the world? So I kind of, I stand up and look down right before I left for work. I put bowl cleaner 
in my toilet, right? And I close the lid so my dog won't like, you know, lick the water, right? It's obviously it's bleach, it's bleach bowl cleaner. The 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 thing that you hold it like this and it kind of has that turn nozzle so you yeah. can spray it around the the top rim and whatever. So I did this and I figured I'll let it soak in, right? I'll just it's not like my toilet was really, you know, beat up or whatever, but I sprayed it around the rim and did whatever and I was like, I'll flush it when I get home. At least the bleach smell and whatever make the bathroom smell cleaner or whatever. I walked right in, sat down, and explosion pooed into that. Do you want to know the sheer panic and fear of, oh, no. Like, did it splash up? Do I now have, like, bleach cleaner stuff on my, you know, on my balls or on my fucking anus or whatever, right? Like, At least you'll be smelling fresh. <laughs> yeah, but it'll probably eat your skin off, too. Like, I'll be walking around, and one of my balls will fall off and hit the ground because there's no, <laughs> there's no satchel to hold it in. So I immediately go, oh, no. So I, I'm i doing like speed wiping. I may be wiping with both hands like, oh. And then I take some more, to- and I'm making sure there's none touching my legs. And so then I have to stand up and do some weird, you know, you know, take some paper towel, get it wet. Now I'm wiping down my, my out, you know, like parts that would never <laughs> be, you know, but I'm like, did it splash up? And I was like, all I need to do is go in and go to sleep and wake up and find out that bleach cleaner water like ate through my skin or something. Dude, horrible. You've Why never you done this. Just get in the shower, because, dude. I would really want to go to bed. <laughs> I mean, if I'm washing just that area, the rest of me didn't need to be washed. I'm going to wash in the morning, so I don't need to take a full shower. And showers have a tendency to wake me up. You need to wake up. I don't need to wake up. I needed to go to bed. What time was it? When I got home. Oh, so this was like twelve o'clock. Crack monster! I told you <laughs> that it was when I got home, <laughs> and I was tired. And the sinuses. You don't listen to the first half of it, do you? So. I mean, I don't want this to be all about, you know, all about poo, but, you know. Yeah, that was that was stupid. Okay. I can't help it. I've got another one. I've got a lot of <laughs> you stories love to go. Talking about poo. Uh, I don't I, swear to God. I don't I don't it's not a recurring theme. It's just when I talk to you somehow. <laughs> you you ask questions about it or whatever, and that leads it nobody else asks me questions about it. I've got like thirty eight stories involving it. It's horrible. Because I get curious and I'm just like, oh, I wonder if this happened to him today. Okay. So listen so listen to this. I'm in Texas and I'm working for working for one of the numerous beverage companies that I was managing or general managing, sales managing. So I'm there. I had to work late hours, like get done at like 6, 6.30 at night. Well, I get a call from a chick friend of mine who she's that one random like, hey, what are you doing? Blah, blah, dude, long day, whatever. I'm, I don't know. I'm about to head home in a minute, dude, traffic. She was like, well, she knows that I could stop at her place and avoid a little bit of the traffic, let traffic die down. She, and it's not like we were on a – I would just go there and whatever. We had to call and set it up. I forget what it was, whether she had an on-again on again boyfriend or had a roommate, something. But she was like, hey, why don't you come over and whatever. And I was like, ah, oh, man. I was like, okay. Well, and, it, dude, it's Texas. It's like 106 degrees. I actually had to work this day. It wasn't like sitting at a desk. I had to go help one of my drivers and help deliver and do whatever, right? So, I know you were melting. Dude, melting. I was sweaty. I knew that I had work crotch, right? It's just, <laughs> you know that there was some sweat there and it couldn't have been pleasant. Like I wasn't just going to go show the, and generally when I hung out with her, it was like, Hey, come over, whatever. And we had to, it was, it was always on a timetable. Like a roommate was going to get home or something. I can't really remember what the chick's deal was, but, uh, so I was like, well, yeah, you know, I was like, yeah, fuck dude, this will make my day much better. Right. Like this will be so much better way of ending my day. So I was like, cool. Well, I thought about it and went, ah, okay, let me hurry up and finish my work. But, dude, I'm smelly. So I go in, and I know I mentioned the hoe bath to you the other day. Yeah. Where you, or some people call it a bird bath. No, but it's I, a hoe bath. It's a hoe up. bath. <laughs> I learned it when I was when I was working in Detroit, when I was managing uh, Lolita's and Bazooki 2. That's where I had one of the dancers show me. She always carried baby wipes in, like, her purse. So she had, like, you know, just regular body cleaning wipes or baby wipes for her, you know, hey, Nanu Nanu and, you know, the back place, Did right? Did she ever shower? No, she was the cleanest, best-smelling, you know, girl ever. And she was a little bit older. She was, like, 35-ish or whatever. So she wasn't, like, a 19-year-old, you know, dancer or whatever. But I always made reference. I was like, God dang, girl. And she was like, what? I was like, every time I see you, you, I'm like, you smell like Christmas morning. You know what I mean? Like, you just... You never, I mean, dude, your perfume's on point. Your makeup's on point. I was like, you know, anything. If you put your arm around me, your elbow smells good. Like, 
You know what I mean? Like she was just, she had her stuff together. Well, one day we were super busy, right? So I'm making sure I'm talking to my bouncers and, hey, is everything good upstairs, downstairs? So I'm standing by the the coat check right at the front, and it was warm. It was like, you know, one of these random days in, in Detroit. Mm -hmm. So she comes down, and uh, the DJ was like, you know, ISIS. Uh, ISIS will be up in two and two. ISIS, <laughs> ISIS, you're up next. And then, you know, hey, blah, blah, blah. And, and all right, uh, you know, Candy will be getting off the say off the stage, and you know next we'll be looking for ISIS, and I'm like, where the f is ISIS, right? So I go by the coat check room. She comes down. She was like, I'm here, I'm here, don't skip me. And she went into the coat check room. So she goes into the coat check room and standing right there. And I'm like, sweetie, okay, what's the matter? Like, why? She was like, oh man, busy day, you know, dances, whatever. She was like, opens her purse and went, pulls out the baby wipes, one. And, she, like, the trash was right here. She threw in the trash, took out another one, got her armpits, went, boom. She had she had pretty big boobs, right? And she went, boom. She lifts the boobs. She got under the boob, like, under boob sweat, which is a lot of, like, the back of my knee, now that we mention it, from, eh. from yesterday <laughs> and today. And my eh. knees are on fire again today. Eh. <laughs> but uh, so she did the lift of the boob and the, and the swipe with one baby wipe and went, under baby wipe. And she went, all right, don't look if you don't want to see this. Boom, went down. <laughs> And did like one from like she cleansed herself with like baby wipes only, and then like two shots of perfume. She had a little like a little travel size thing of deodorant, and then ran past me. And as soon as the one girl was taking her steps off the stage, she and I went, <laughs> "Oh my god, that is a professional!" Like I am so impressed. How she did that in like 30 seconds? Well, how she did it in like 30 seconds. And then number two, the difference in her versus another girl who would have just ran down and jumped on stage. Now, on stage, you're not going to be too close to anybody anyways, right? Unless they go to tip you and you lean down. But this girl never took – she never, never took the – Like the chance. The chance, it. right? And, dude, I was like, that's good. That The fact that she had everything in her little – you know, in her little – purse that she carried with her at work the fact that she did it so efficiently and then I went and that's the difference between a woman and a girl I was like she's about her business <laughs> I was like that is actually that is actually pretty epic but anyway so that's the that's the whole bath so I remember this from my older days the whole bath I remember this and then uh in that same token I'm like I gotta go see this chick Right. So I get everyone out of the out of the office. Right. I'm the last one there. I lock up, make sure all the vehicles are good. And then I leave. So everyone's out of the office. I'm like, cool. I'm not going to go take a whole bath in the bathroom. And hey, Jake, <laughs> what are you doing in there? Come in. And I've got a towel between my butt and, you know, whatever, trying to, you know, cleanse myself. So I go in there, take my shirt off, pull my pants. Out. I'm standing there in boxers. So I'm actually taking some water. Obviously, I don't have the same, you know, stuff that she does. Right. So I take this. I splash. I'm using a little hand soap you know, whatever, I'm using paper towels and like those brown ones here and whatever. Yeah. So it's not pleasant, but I'm making sure my armpits are cool. I don't have deodorant to put on. It's not like I was expecting this. So I got to make sure everything's clean. So I this, this, and then as I'm like halfway through, I look over and I see, you have you, you've seen baby wipes, how they sell the little packages to put inside the plastic containers. Yes. So when you open the lid on the plastic container, you, you know, take out the old, put in the new one and then crack the top and then you just pull them out through the top. Yeah. So I look over and I went, cause we had a female, <laughs> we had a female at the, at the office also. Right. So I look and I went, dude, baby wipes, ISIS, Christmas morning. I went. <laughs> Um, I got it. I got this. So I'm like, all right, cool. I got this. So I'm like, Phew. I open the thing. I take it out. And they're huge, which made me stop for a minute. But remember, I'm thinking about going and wrestling with a girl real quick. So I go, that's a, what kind of, what, what size of baby did they make this for? Right? It was just a gigantic baby wipe. So I went, ah, screw it. Phew. I got my armpits. I get, you know, in between your, you know, your legs and your bells and then, you know, underneath my balls and, you know, I kind of, you know, do a couple wipes with them. Like I'm doing the best, everything I've learned in Hobath 101, right? <laughs> the things you get when you manage a strip club and, you know, you get to see some things and right. learn some stuff. <laughs> so I do all this and then as I'm doing it, I'm like, mm, those are really big baby wipes. 
Those are really big baby wipes. Wasn't the one, weren't the ones she had like s- small? They're normal size baby wipes. You know what I mean? So like the size of a Kleenex. So again, <laughs> I'm I I've, I've just washed my whole body in this, and I'm telling you, I grabbed my I grabbed my unit and went pulled back and got underneath the helmet of the unit with the baby wipe. Right? I mean, I used one for that, and then the, the bells, and then you know, in between the legs and the the butt and whatever, and I went. Something really doesn't seem right with the weird bait. I grab the thing. I flip it over. Industrial floor cleaning pads. Like for a Swiffer. <laughs> oh. if, if I could have told you the sheer. <laughs> I used industrial floor cleaning. So now. So now I don't know if if it is. I told you, it's not easy being me. It is really not easy being me. So I don't know if it's um, the that I learned of the fact that I just oh my washed myself 100% with industrial floor cleaning material or that it was really burning, but I started to tingle in all the exact places that I just washed, and I went... <gasps> Your what bowels. If, what if, what if, and I was like, I grabbed the helmet and I washed inside of it. So now I literally just take cack and balls and put it in the sink. And I'm like, whoo, I'm letting the water run up. I'm like, oh, and I'm splashing water on me and I'm splashing. I'm now taking soap from there and I'm trying to like as fast as I can get water. And then I'm like, oh, my ass crack and my, you know, the actual part of the butt. <laughs> I'm like, ah, I'm scooping water and I'm splashing it on there and I'm taking other towels and trying to wash. Dude, I was so petrified. I thought my skin was going to fall off. (laughs) Oh, my God. Dude, who in God's green earth? (laughs) And that's why you need to slow down and think about some of the things you do. I'm just supposed to be in, like, a janitor's closet. I would assume so. the (laughs) The bathroom was kind of, like... The cleaning material would be over there, but they were sitting right there that I looked. I didn't know. I thought maybe there was a secret stash of, of baby wipes, but they were big. They were they were like this size. The size of the screen. Well, no, not the whole size of the screen. About half of the width of the screen and then there. So a normal baby wipe is like this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like a four by eight card or, you know, something along that line. <laughs> this was like two to three inches. It would go on a Swiffer mop. <laughs> Where you clip the two sides, <laughs> but it was industrial cleaning things. You didn't even need to use water because they were damp when you pulled them out like baby wipes. And I smeared it all over my private parts. Oh my God. That's what you get for judging a book by its cover. Oh God. Yeah. And everything was cool. I tingled for a while, but the skin didn't fall off. My armpits, the hair didn't like disappear. Um, <laughs> it was good. And dude, I was even nervous. Like it kind of affected my my shenanigan time with the girl because I'm like, Hey, I didn't obviously didn't tell her. I waited a few days to tell my friends like, you know, cause I didn't want to tell them. And then, ah, you know, all my stuff fell off. Like, not good. Right. I'm surprised you didn't lose any of your hair. No, no. Well, I shaved all your hair. I shaved. Well, no, no, nothing came off there. Nothing. I didn't have any hair down there to come off, but (laughs) some may have, I may have had a straggler hair down there, but I don't know if it, I don't know if it was there or not because I don't really catch that view. So, yeah, washing yourself accidentally, taking a hoe bath with industrial floor cleaning thingies. You live a very interesting life. Dude, I haven't thought of that story in a while. Oh, my God. <laughs> you, know what made me, you know what made me think of it is when I, last night, I went poof, and all of the bleach with super extreme cleaning power, the <laughs> thing with the weird neck, first time I've ever used it. Normally, I just, you know, use the brush and I put the stuff in there and splash it around but i got the one with the cool little neck it looks like a duck's neck if you turn it the other way and yeah i dude i ran it all around there there and then sprayed a little and then closed the thing came home sat down and pooed right on top of it and it splashed so i had to do the same panic wash my butt like if if the sink if the sink was about the right size and i wasn't concerned about the neck of the uh the neck of the water spout i would have just plunked my butt right in the sink and turned the water on but then yeah the back thing may have got me why don't you do that to the bathroom here do what clean the inside because i don't have that thing with the neck i just started <laughs> doing it for myself 
Oh, believe me, I, I do. But, you know, I do have an employee, right, that it used to be when he used to work for me, guess what, every Monday, clean the bathroom. Nobody to see. Nobody decides to clean the bathroom. I'm the only one who's ever cleaned the bathroom here, and it drives me nuts. I get no respect. Pay me three hundred dollars, and I'll touch it. <laughs> the bathroom? <laughs> Have uh, you seen that thing? Is my eyes melt? Oh, uh, I went in with the. Uh, I went in with the. Uh, the powder, um, like borax stuff, and I did that, and I did clean the thing, and did whatever, like last week. Quote unquote, last week. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll get around to it this week. Or now that you mentioned it, guess what, Mikey? Clean the bathroom on Monday. Oh, my God. Don't do that to him. <laughs> His face will melt off. That's kind of what being an employee, right? You're here all day. <laughs> Fairly certain there was some downtime. Clean the bathroom. <laughs> I mean, if I have to start going like my parents, you know, like I had to get a letter signed from my, from my teachers when I – like what my homework was. Like I had gotten in so much trouble for not doing my schoolwork that my my parents and the school teachers talked to one another, and every night, whether I had homework or not, I had like a little sheet of paper that I had to give to my mom and dad and Mrs. Houston or you know Mr. Johnson or whatever. Who's Mrs. Houston? She Who's was actually Johnson. Mrs. Houston was actually my fifth grade teacher at East Middle or at uh what you call it? What is that one? Field Elementary School, fifth grade. She was my Miss Houston. You asked who Miss <laughs> Houston was. She's a real person. She was my fifth grade. Don't know what she taught or whatever, but she, obviously pretty influential because she's the only she's the only teacher's name that I remember from that. From oh, I assumed you remember because you thought she was one of your hot teachers. <laughs> no, but you're you are redeeming yourself today from from your shenanigan stuff because you know <laughs> you know what my next segment was going to be. Yes. No, you don't. <laughs> no. The teachers, you no, know, you don't because I didn't tell you. That's how we keep it fresh, right? I could have told you about, oh, I pooed in toxic chemicals and did whatever. I and think you remember that story. No, I didn't, right? <laughs> so, that again, that's how, we ke- that's how we keep it fresh, right? You, you're see, you're, this could be like a complete aberration. Like, I don't even know. This isn't really happening. I'm just, like, I, I have a closed head injury or something like Oh, where are all these stories come from? You're a figment of my imagination. There's no telling because it is bizarre. The next segment was um, a, I think it was a local school teacher. Yeah, because it was on Fox 2. But all, there was a local school teacher, female, who got caught having sex with her students, right? And, you know, obviously she's 27, 28. I think she was a, I think she was either a substitute or a part-time teacher or whatever. (laughs) And she was having sex with, you know, with one of her students underage, obviously. Right. And I don't know if you've noticed, I mean, have you seen this in the news pop up over the last like couple years? It's been going on like heavily for the last like five, five, seven years. Yeah. That happened at my high school. Did it really? No names. Of course not. (laughs) But, uh, but yeah, so you, you've noticed it. And why is it like the dudes do creepy stuff, right? Guys are, we're we're creeps, right? We're creeps. You know this, we're creeps, right? Mm Mm-hmm. But the female teachers that are doing this, I hate to say it, but most of them are kind of hot. Like when I look and I'm like, oh, I'm like, dude, what? you know, and I know obviously the legality of everything. <laughs> but if you're 16 or 17 and you're having sex with your 16 or 17, we all in high school, right? You said 17. I said 16. Everyone I knew was doing some kind of shenanigans. <laughs> right. But, dude, that would be a huge badge of honor. If like that one super hot lady teacher and somehow she dug you, I don't know why. And I, and again, look, I get the legalities and I know right and wrong and whatever. I, I, but somehow I don't believe that it's wrong for guys. Like I totally think it's cool. Like, dude, you're going to be the man forever. You're going to be the man forever. And you're also going to catch a lot of flack for telling people, right? Like why oh, you yeah. told on yourself is stupid, but that's kind of hard not to tell. Like, you know, you me, know you I got to brag to somebody, you know, I come in and be like, oh, my God, dude, you're the same way. You'd be like, dude, no, I did this and that last night. Oh, yeah. Woo, like, <laughs> and I, you know, I come in and be like, dude, you this and this. Right. So we tell on ourselves. But if you know you're going to get in trouble or, you know, whatever, like if somebody could be in huge trouble or at least wait until you're out of school or something. But, dude, these these guys tell on themselves. Well, they either tell their friends, somebody tells you know they what I mean? They tell their friends. They won't literally like go up to some, like go up to a teacher or somebody and tell. I mean, unless they're not getting their way. 
Right, like, because not? then it's like <laughs> weird and blackmaily or whatever. But but yeah, this local one, you know, happened. I don't want to get too, you know, they're all pretty much the same. Oh, and now with phones and whatever and sexting and, oh, you know, pictures and this and that. And then she ended That's up having Snapchat sex with them. That's what Snapchat is for. <laughs> yeah, but you can still screenshot. But then okay. the other person knows you screenshot it. Is, no, unless you download that one app, there's an app for it where you are able to screenshot without the person knowing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, oh, balls. <laughs> I, uh, nah, I'm not empty yet. But uh, <laughs> That's what you said. Yeah, good <laughs> trick. That's right. It's early on a Friday night. Um, yeah, but I tell every time I, I – well, I don't tell, but I screenshot, like, knowingly. If you give me cool whatever, I'm like – Especially if it's a girl I'm hanging out with and whatever. She was like, you, you just screenshotted that? I was like, yes. You just sent me naked pictures. Like, of course I'm going to screenshot it. Well, don't be showing anybody. Well, what do you think? What do you think? Then why would you send it? Well, and I'm like, too, I'm not going to go run around and show everybody, right? But, yes, if I screenshot on the, I'm like, dude, are you coming over tonight? No? Cool. Well, guess what I'm going to be looking at and thinking about, right? It'll, it'll help keep me warm while I fall asleep. Like, yes, I'm going to. Now, if I have a bunch or if you've already sent me random pictures or done whatever, then, yeah, I'm not going to screenshot it. But if I had no other research material or reference material, oh, yeah, i got to have one. But I don't try and lie about it. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah, I took that. I don't understand. Like, if it's on Snapchat and you see the screenshots, like, why ask? Like, you already know they did. Yeah. So it's like. And well, and I no think they in lying about it like they see it or be like, oops, did I or, you know, or like the guy who hit my car the other day. It was like, <laughs> did I hit your car? I'm like, bro, I just walked up to you with my hands out like, what the F? And the first words out of your mouth are, oh, did I hit your car? I don't know, fella. That was the first thing you thought about saying. So I'm going to have to go ahead and say, yes, you probably did hit my car, sir. That's like walking into a courtroom and they say you did. And they say you robbed a bank. Did I really rob a bank? Or, <coughs> Mr. Johnson, do you know why you're here? Did I rob a bank? Do you think I robbed a bank? Well, yeah, that's why you're here. Well, I don't know. You say it. I guess it's right. <laughs> yeah, it's very weird. But, yeah, I don't know. The weird, the school, you know, the school thing is bizarre the, with the, I don't know. I mean, we all had a hot tea. I don't know if girls have, like, hot crushes on teachers or whatever, if there's they guy do. teachers. Do they? Yeah. Yeah, well, you guys are all boy crazy at a certain age. Anyways. <laughs> Like, no matter how old the teacher is, though, and uh, how amazing he looks. Well, yeah. But, I, yeah, it's crazy. I don't know, man. I look at some of these girls, and I'm like, dude, these are good-looking, attractive chicks. Like, psychologically, what's wrong inside of their head to, you know, and I think it goes back to the, like, this is why I'm not freaked out by anything, because, dude, I'm sorry, dude. Most people at 16 or 17 are having sex anyways. Dude, it's your whole goal in life. Like, dude, I got to pass this class, and I need to find someone to let me, you know, touch their butt, right? Like, no, I need your to. Your whole goal is to lose your virginity. I need you to see. A, have to go I need to see a boob or whatever, right? Like, you just you need to do stuff. It's on your mind, hundred percent. So if you're doing it, doing it with somebody a little bit older or whatever, still to me doesn't, you know, doesn't, you know, eh. as a guy, you know, I could see a girl like an older guy teacher messing with a girl. That would be weird, right? You know, just yeah. teacher, whatever. That's that's odd. But a hot older teacher, lady, messing with a younger dude, I'm sorry, but I was ready to go at 17. I was ready to go. I had already had like maybe eight months under my belt. Like I was learning and learning quick. You know what I mean? I had a pretty cool girlfriend. She was she was showing me things. It was neat. Now, now because in the weird, in the weird realm of, oh, my God, Jake, you seem to have a story for everything. Mm-hmm. I dated a girl, right? Mm-hmm. Not not in Michigan, but I dated a girl. She had that, and it was weird. She told me after we were dating for like maybe three or four months. She's like, oh, there's something I need. You know, my ex-boyfriend, she would mention ex-boyfriend. And I was like, cool. You know what I mean? Ex-boyfriend, whatever. Well, I mean, it's kind of a weird situation. I was like, aren't they all? Like, st- I don't want to know about <laughs> any other... <laughs> So you had another dude, and you, you done, you made the sticky time. I don't care, right? What do I care? Like, exactly. Next, you know, what are we having for dinner, right? Like, so as we, as we, she kind of like baby stepped into it, and she was like, and she was a teacher. Light bulb. And she went, well, he was one of my students, and I went, oh no, am I gonna have to turn this bitch in? <laughs> like, what? And she was like, well, no, not, not when we were. You know, not when he was in school, but as soon as he graduated, like she did the wait until he graduated, right? 
he graduated and she started dating him. Which I guess following the letter of the law, you know, you turn 18 and then you graduate or whatever and then she dated him. You are allowed to do that. But I know, but you got to admit that's just teetering. That's like you're walking the line. That is so like, and even if she would have, if the school would have found out, they would have fired her. That even, because she did, she had a a friendly relationship with him prior. Exactly. Now, that's what she, that's what she was saying. I was going to say that's what she said, but, (laughs) but uh, that's what she was saying, right? That she didn't, but who's to say she didn't? have some kind of shenanigan relationship with him so you're telling me you met this kid you had some it's even creepier that even if she didn't have sex with him but she had like an emotional connection with him as a teacher student all the way through the year and then waited and waited and waited and then like woo, happy graduation right to be fair she's no, to be fair, she said she dated him after high school, after you graduated. She never said she didn't do shenanigans. Well, no, with that, him. But, but that's that was kind of, I mean, kind of implied. But yeah, that's what she, that's what she said or whatever. So yeah, and you know, you're actually bending down to get that. He got on his knees, folks. I was like, <laughs> no, I didn't. I I bent over and stuck my stuck my butt in the air and, ooh, but that felt good cleaning out the knees. Ooh, the knees get hot sitting like this. <laughs> Well, it's just, it's humid. It's creepy humid. It's an era. It is. It's on like 73, and this is a gigantic building. I'm not turning this stuff down to 69. Oh, my God. All you got to do is put it on 48. Yeah, it won't go to 48, miss. There How is a, there's a level. Um, I think to like 60, 62 or 65, maybe. Something like it that. was 91 degrees. That should have been on 65. <laughs> no, you're going to pay the light bill around here? Miss, I assume uh, they pay it. At. Oh boy, what a world you live in! That like, <laughs> this is a, somebody else pays the light bill and everything. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, that'd be a good world to live in. <laughs> so it would also be like uh, old buddy who was over here who was like, oh, so American cars and whatever, and you know, would you pay more for? I'm like, dude, our cars already cost more. You know how. That was that was the man. I wish they would have been potted up and mic'd. I mean, granted, it was all over the place. It really didn't have you know much continuity. But what segment with us does? But uh, yeah, no, that was that was pretty crazy. But yeah, I don't know. I dated that girl for a while and tried to tried to make it work and whatever. But I was I can't I can't lie and be like, dude, I'm kind of creeped out. Like every time there was any like seventeen year olds around, I'm like, oh balls, is she gonna run off with one of them? No, but she, she must have been a looker then if she did. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, she was she was all right. Jake does well. You've seen some of the some of the chicks I hang out with and do yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'd be so shocked. I'm like, why? <laughs> <laughs> How old are they? <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it is uh, it's a trip, man. My um, that's that was one of the first. That was actually the first like relationship I was in where my thought process got really progressive. We decided you want to be in love and married and have like 44 different Jakes out there. No, but I did want to settle <laughs> down with her. I did want to settle down. Like, I'm, look, I'm over it. You, did you hear the little conversation I had with them? It doesn't matter. There's only a few people that make it to rock star status of, of, you know, making more than six figures, right? Or, you know, if you're making, you know, even, you know, just to be at that part. And then, the, you know, oh, you're making 100 grand. 100 grand isn't rock star life anymore. You know what I mean? You're comfortable. And you can do fun stuff if you live responsibly. But if you go buy a, a $300,000 house in Canton and you've got a, a cool car and whatever, dude, you add up those bills plus electricity because it's not free, right? So, yeah. you know, other things. You're not ma- you're not living like lifestyles of the rich and famous, right? You're pretty much so. Why overthink everything and why try so doggone hard? And dude, I've been doing it for a while, right? I've started multiple businesses. I've done X, Y, and Z. And then you get to a point where you go, dude. At th- at the end of the day, all I want to do is get up. I want to wrestle with whatever chicks laying next to me, right? Hopefully the same one because I did say I'm monogamous, right? I want to wrestle with whatever chicks next to me. Pat her on the hiney, go get my coffee, take my dogs for a walk, you know, go to the gym, do a couple things, come home and, you know, have sex again, maybe have some dinner, go have a drink maybe with your have buddies. Some dinner. <laughs> maybe. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. That's why God made hot pockets. 
It's not really dinner, but it'll do in a pinch. Hot pockets. Shame on you. But, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of crazy. But, yeah, she's the one where my progressive relationship where I went, look, I don't care what, like, we had gone, we had dated for a while, and then I worked nights and she worked days and everything was kind of weird and, you know, oh, and then, you know, she was kind of mad because we weren't spending enough time together and whatever, which seems to be the overall theme in my existence. This has been, you got to remember, this was a while ago, and, dude, that, that's what little Miss Muffet recently, ooh, you, we don't spend enough time together. I'm like, what are you talking about? I was like, dude, be at my house at 9 o'clock, dude. I'm there every, you know, like 9, 10 o'clock, dude. It's cool. Spend the night. We play, you know, Twister and Wrestle. It's fine. <laughs> oh, I'm afraid of your dogs and this and that. And it ended up only being, a you know, once or twice a week or whatever. And I was like, no. I was like, I can do that anywhere. I can randomly do that on my own. You know what I mean? If I want, if you're going to be the one to just chill and make sure you're over multiple times a night. But this chick, I... It was it was kind of weird. Like I was like, dude, let's settle down, let's do whatever. Well, she was like, well, I don't know. I mean, I've only been so single out of whatever, and you know, I might want to date other people. And I was like, cool, if you want to date other people, date other people. You know, so if you you well, she started with getting serious with me, and then I got hip to the idea, and then she went, well, I don't know, and I was like, no, you got me thinking <laughs> that, and then you pulled the, it was like uh, Snoopy with the. You know, they would, uh, the, she would always <laughs> hold the football and then take the ball away from Charlie Brown. And I was like, Wait, that wasn't Snoopy. That was Lucy. It was Lucy and Charlie Brown. But I don't know, Snoopy, who was, what is the Peanuts gang? So Snoopy was the dog. I know, but Charlie Brown was his homeboy. Yeah. Snoopy didn't have shows by himself. He was in there with Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown was actually the, the dude. But for whatever reason, I like dogs more than people. I just call it Snoopy and then figure out who the other actors were. Oh, my God. The little cartoon actors are. That's funny. But, uh, but yeah, she was. that's when I got really progressive and I went, look. I was like, you know what? Cool. So if we're just going to date and we're just going to like hang out on the weekends because our schedules didn't work during the week. And I was like, cool. If that's the deal, um, you know, uh, cool. I was like, dude, go date. Go figure it out, right? I'm not around you. Monday through Monday through Thursday night, right? Or through Friday night. Do if you need to feel that you're you want to date other people and you want to see what's out there. I was like, I can tell you it's not wonderful out there, right? I go, I am much nicer to you and I'm much nicer to you than I've been to most any girl I've ever been with. Any person. Yeah. Well, no, girls. I'm nice to my friends and stuff, but not to not to any, you know, female ever. And I was like, you know what, bro? Go ahead. I didn't think about it Monday through Friday. I was like, but on Friday, you know, when I get off work, I'm coming over to your house and we're hanging out Friday. We'll hang out Saturday and then, you know, cool Sunday, you know, we'll hang out for a while and then we'll go back to work. So that's what we did. And she would want to tell me about like, oh, I went out with this guy. And I was like, I don't want to hear this. I was like, I don't want to hear this. And I was like, you know what? Cool. Maybe I, maybe I do want to hear it. Right. Maybe. And I was like, I was like, dude, you'll figure it out. And of course she dated someone. He's kind of weird. And this guy's not so nice and this and this. And she was like, I'm not having sex with anyone. And she wasn't really quick to, even with me, she wasn't really quick to. And she mentioned that, because I had almost given up on her. I was like, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, what are you Here doing? Here it goes, man. <laughs> yeah, and I was like, bro, no. So, yeah, so that whole thing happened. And then at one point, I like, it just kind of, I went, dude, what am I doing? You know what I mean? I was like this is stupid. She's not going to get it. And if I keep doing this, it'll keep going that way. So I went, Hey, you're still cool and whatever, but I'm just going to go do something else. Like, you know, and then I ended up moving back here, you know? So it was kind of weird because I was like, ah, what am I going to do? Do I stay, stay here, move back here, blah, blah, blah. And I went, ah, this isn't worth it. So, you know, told her cool. We kind of had a cordial breakup or whatever. I move and I get back here. After like, I think it was like a month or two with me being gone. I made a mistake and you were the best thing. Other guys are jerks and assholes and whatever. And I went, I was like, yeah, I kind of told you that. Like you got mad at me when I told you that. Like I gave her the, dude, you're not going to find somebody with all the weird hangups. And like she had some stuff like just hangups and like just oh my God. weird. The right? fact that you tolerated it is like, what the heck? Well, dude, think about it. What all I had to tolerate it for was on the weekend. <laughs> Cause I worked, I work nights. She works days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I can deal with a lot of crap for a couple days. 
And they're like, you know. Whatever. So. <laughs> well, uh, we found your motivation. <laughs> dude, seriously, all my relationships. Dude, if I told you the stuff I tolerated from my, like, three and a half year high school college girlfriend to my my six year, you know, blah, 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 get married for a minute and then hokey pokey, get right back out. Um, you got to figure what, that was nine and a half years with those two that I had another like year. I had like two year relationships, three year relationships. Two, Yeah, dude, I've been in relationships more than I've ever been single. That's why I'm like really, I, I don't really enjoy being single. I wish like magically a cool chick would be like, Hey, cool. And you're nice. And I do weird stuff for you and whatever. And it'd be cool. That would be awesome and not be a pain in the ass and Whatever, that would be great, but they're not that easy to find. So, of course, I'm going to do random, like, the temptation for me to not go home and take a shower and go search for the little person is strong. Like, the will is strong. But I should just wait until tomorrow. But no, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. May the force be with you, my friend. Yeah, but then again, by the time I get home and do whatever and grab a bite to eat, I see Scoob. Scoob hasn't seen me in a couple <laughs> hours. You know what I mean? This is my life. No, I'm digging, I'm just like, first of all, single is the way to go. <laughs> single. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't need companionship. I've got it with my dogs. I've got affection with my dogs. It's just trying to, like, I need that also. But girls are going to be a pain in the ass no matter what. So if you find that perfect one, and they have to be a saint from God. <laughs> they no. have to be a goddess. <laughs> well, I'm not even looking for perfect one. Just I think I, my, I've broken it down to don't be a pain in the ass, right? Do whatever you want. Just make sure you show up later at the night and we make the whatever. Dude, you could just come over from like 10 to 11 and be like, hey, what's up? Cool. What are we watching? <laughs> Oh, that was fun. Ah, cool. All right. Peace out. See you tomorrow. And leave and go do whatever you want in life. Right. And if you need me to go to a movie or a family function or something, sure, I'll go do it. Right. But I could live my normal existence the way I do now just if somebody came to my house from like, to, let's call it 10 to 12, throw a little foreplay in there. <laughs> 10 to 12. <laughs> you know what I mean? 10 to 11, that's pretty much start, blah, blah, blah. That's enough time to clean up, put your socks back on, and then go. Get your crown of king ready. That's right. You got to give it a couple minutes to kick in, you know. <laughs> but, uh, well, no, if it was regulated like that, I would, when I'm leaving here, I would take and whatever and stretch out a little bit, do some toe touches, and ready to go. You could touch your toes? We had that talk about flexibility. Yeah. I didn't know you could touch your toes. We had the, when you said, and I went, well, when you didn't, that's not flexibility. I was like, that is exactly what the, like, Webster's definition, you know, flexible to bend, to do this, that, and the other, i.e., touch your toes. That is extremely flexible. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't, I haven't done it, and I haven't done it in a minute, but that is one of your generalized stretches before you run and before you do whatever. You do a body hang with your arms and whatever. I mean, I don't think I push, I don't push the issue, but if, if going through my normal stretching, yes, I can I can get down. I'm sure I would probably be, you know, a little short right now. Could you put your like complete hand Hell on? Hell no, I look like a, <laughs> I look like a gymnast. Can I do a cartwheel? Can you? No. Can you do a backflip? I can't do none of it. <laughs> can you roll over? <laughs> Frontward only. Yeah, but I'd probably urgh, there'd be a growl. <laughs> I know I do that in bed. My mattress I need a new mattress in bed. Get that one that blows up that you could just order in the mail. It comes in a box. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to. But I think we've got a friend in the furniture business, like Uncle Robinson or whatever. That was an old commercial. Um, you've got a friend in the furniture business, Uncle Robinson, or something like that. You're so old. Yeah. What, well, dude? I just uh, you're so young. You look like a low budget Tupac. Doesn't know how to wear their headband. You're not. Hey. You're not Thug Life right now. <laughs> You are not. You are. You are Laura Ingalls with the with it like up on your. I, dude, if it were me, like every time I look at it, I'm like, I would turn that thing around, tie it, and have my doohickeys. Like, I'd Malibu most wanted the f out of that right now. <laughs> Just turn around, have it sitting right there. I'm not Minnie Mouse. I can't do that. That's the Tupac. It's not Minnie Mouse. I mean, oh, you're so old. You said Minnie Mouse, and I used Tupac, and ah. <laughs> On that note, Jake Podcast, jakepodcast.com. <laughs>